So dear friends in Christ, I believe that the gospel that we read for today is one of the most, so to say, confusing of the Sunday gospels that we have before us in the liturgical year. And it might not seem very easy to understand what our Lord is trying to get across at first. It might seem like he is commending the wicked steward for his fraud, for his dishonesty, but that is not the case. Our Lord is commending the unjust steward for his, so to say, ambition and zeal in striving to provide for himself temporarily. And he, our Lord is commending that and, so to say, encouraging us to make sure that we have just as much zeal and ambition in providing for our spiritual, uh, spiritual well-being. And so it is that he, it's, they, we see in today's gospel, we see mentioned the mammon of iniquity. And it's also mentioned in another one of the gospels where our, our Lord tells us that he cannot serve both God and mammon. And mammon, I would say, is the mammon of iniquity or mammon is the spirit of the world. It's the world or worldliness. And I wanted to mention to you a story that I just recently came across. It was of a priest from Slovenia. He was ordained in the 40s, uh, but he lived under the communist regime in Slovenia. And he, so to say, went through a very difficult period in his life. And I haven't actually read the book that he wrote. He wrote a book called Communism as I Knew as I Know It. But I read a little section of it, and he tells about, so to say, the martyrdom of his of his family. He was a seminarian, and he came from a family of three, four, five. There was a total of six of them. And his older brother, his older brother was Frank, and he was a very, very strong Catholic, as were his parents and the rest of his family. But Frank, his older brother, was one of the leading lay people in the in the area that uh, would help to organize a lot of the Catholic action groups and a lot of the a um, lot of the pamphlets and things to that effect to try to counteract counteract the spirit of communism that was prevailing that was being jammed down the people's throats at that time. And so it is that the communists saw the zeal, saw the ambition and the great uh, love that he had for his faith, and they started to try to bribe Frank to join the Communist Party, try to use all sorts of, we'll, we'll give you lots of money, you won't ever go hungry, you have a big house, etc., etc. And when they and when they saw that Frank was not budging, that he was very strong in what he believed in his faith and his love of God, then they resorted to threats, and they started to resort uh, to all sorts of uh, little little attacks here and there, and finally they they threatened him with death, that they were going to kill him if he didn't join their party. And Frank was very very upset. He said, "How can you t how can you ask me to join the party when you guys are butchering people left and right and you say you're looking for the welfare of the people? That's that's far from the truth." And Frank knew that by his response, by his final no, that he was going to be put to death. So it is that a few days later, the chief police of the town came to the house of, of Father Vladimir Kuzina, uh, which was Frank's uh, younger brother, and he was asked to come outside. And as soon as the brother, the older brother Frank, went outside, they started to beat him over the head with a club. And they were beating him so hard that the club actually broke in half. And they parents were pleading, please, he hasn't done anything wrong, please let him go. And uh, and a lot of the, suddenly a crowd came up from the neighbors and uh, the communists were saying, how can you let this pig be amongst your presence? And they dragged him away and they locked him up in a prison and they went ahead and they tortured him and uh, they beat him up fairly pr pretty well and at the, at the end they, they uh, put him to death, they shot him in the head. And this happened in May, and it was the parents, obviously, being strong Catholics, they wanted to bury the body of their of their son in a worthy manner. So it is that they hunted and packed for the body of their son for actually a couple of months. It went a couple of months before they found uh, the body of, of their son. And they knew it was their son because the prayer book was found with him. Uh, his, his prayer book he had carried about always with him. He was found in, in, the, in that, uh, that hasty grave that had been dug for him by the communists. So it is that they um, put him in a coffin and they 
dressed him up and they put and they they had a procession from the house to the cemetery which was about 10 miles from the home so it was actually a lengthy journey the interesting thing is that the people they knew that he was a martyr and the people had not their faith was still they still had their faith and they lined the, the street uh, the streets and they were throwing flowers as the coffin was passing by and sure enough the communists were very displeased with this and the family was going to have to pay especially the parents were going to have to pay so not even a week after the the, the funeral he showed up at the middle of the night at the house again and father Vladimir Kuzina um, he he heard that there was a ruckus going on he heard the dark dog barking he was upstairs and he saw um, that the house was surrounded and he quickly uh, ran into the next room and got into the attic and pulled up the ladder behind him and he was able to hide from the communists but the rest of the family did not have a chance um, and he was able to hear everything that happened uh, they rounded up the whole family into the living room downstairs and they they, uh, they started to uh, harass the family and the mother said something um, to the effect of why are you here and they gave her a very sharp blow on the head and uh, and the family started to pray the ro started to pray the rosary out loud because they were very scared and they knew that this was not good and they were they were they were shouted at to not not pray to be silent but they kept praying and sure enough they took the father downstairs into the basement and as the father was was uh, leaving uh, the room he prayed my Jesus I am thine in life and in death uh, keep me as thine forever and they took him downstairs and they shot him they took Frank's uh, his father excuse me Father Vladimir uh, he had a younger brother who was a paralegic or uh, he, he was bedridden and he wasn't able to he had an illness wasn't able to walk and he obviously had not he hadn't done anything but they took him downstairs in the basement and they they killed him as well and the mother they took her downstairs and she had to see what they had done to her husband and to her son and uh, they killed her as well um, and they were looking for Father Vladimir because they had seen that they had searched the house and they had seen that there was someone else here and they knew they had another son but they were not able to find him and so it is that the father the mother and uh, the other son was killed were killed because of their being Catholics because of their being strong and fervent Catholics and not going along with the communist so to say propaganda not going along with what the communists wanted to jam down people's throats and father father Vladimir uh, wrote about this he he was ordained a priest in 1947 and uh, very interesting and the reason I tell the story is that we should ask ourselves if we were put in the same position if we were put in the position of give up your faith give up your church or else be put to death ask yourself what well, what would I do if I if there was no way out whatsoever no way out it was either life or death and the only reason that I would be alive were that if I gave up God if I gave up my faith and I gave up my the law my 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 church that's the only way that I would be alive what would we do ask yourself what would I do would I be strong enough to say no I'm true to God and I'm not going to give up my faith I love God more than anything else or would we be willing to cave in and go along with what is asked of us with the with with the unjust thing that is asked of us and the thing is that it's easy for us to sit here in church and, and say well I would give my life for God I would do the hard thing and I would definitely give my life for him and I'd be martyred it's easy to say that now we're sitting here in church and and in, in the presence of God it's easy to say but the thing is that how many of us are not being faithful stewards in the little things and the little things that are asked of us in our day-to-day -day life by God, by our faith, by the church, we're not being faithful to that. We're not being faithful to our daily prayers. We're not being faithful to the Friday abstinence. We're not being faithful to the daily rosary. We're not being faithful to living a life of sanctifying grace. We're not living, we're not being faithful in staying out of mortal sin. And we're not being faithful in the little things. And if we're not being faithful in the little things, 
how are we going to be faithful if we ever put in the circumstance, in the situation where we have to give up our life for God? And don't kid yourself, and I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but that very well could be the case here in the near future. It's something that we always have to remind ourselves that the world that we live in is not not a very good world, it's a very ungodly world, and we see a persecution of all that is good, all that is just, and all that is holy is being under attack, it's being persecuted. And so if we're going if we're going to be with God and with the church, it's we're going to suffer persecution as well. So don't let that scare you, don't let that overwhelm you, but let that remind you that we have to be faithful to God in little things if we're going to be faithful to Him in the big things. Be faithful in the living of our faith, in the living of a life of sanctifying grace, in the commandments of God and the commandments of the church. So God is one day going to, we're going to have to stand before Almighty God and He's going to ask us to give an account of our stewardship just like this man was in today's gospel. He was, he had, was brought before the, the chief, the, the, the master, and say, give an accounting of your stewardship. And it's the same with us. We are all stewards. We all have been given things by Almighty God, be it our talents, be it the money that we have, be it the possessions that we have, be it our health, whatever it we have has been given to us by Almighty God. And God's going to ask us at the at our death, what did you do with those things? Did you use them just for your pleasure? Did you use them just for your amusement? Or did you use them for good? Did you use them for the betterment of your neighbor? Did you use them for God's greater honor and glory? Did you use it to help you to achieve your end, which is heaven? What did you do with the things that God has given to you? And so many times we we get so caught up with the world, with our jobs, with our lives, with our possessions, that we we use them just for our own pleasure and our own amusement, and we don't use them for God. We don't give them back to Almighty God, and we misuse the things that God has given to us. And so remind yourself that God is going to ask us to give an account of everything that we, He has given to us. How do we use them? Do we use them for good? And... So many times we, God sends us little reminders. It might be an illness. It might be uh, something uh, that happened to our neighbor, uh, a certain tra- tragic circumstance that reminds us, hey, I'm not going to be here forever. What am I doing for my soul? What am I doing for my salvation? And God gives us little wake-up calls, little things to remind us. And we use it for a little bit, and then we forget. We put it behind us, and we forget. We say, oh, false alarm. And God's not going to call me anytime soon, and we get comfortable. We get comfortable with, the position that we're in, get comfortable with where we're at in life, at least temporally speaking, and we forget about God and we put God on the back burner. I know we've spoken about these things before, but let us remind ourselves, let us not be outdone by the people of the world. The people of the world are so ambitious in earning up for themselves riches and possessions, and they're not going to be able to take them with them in their next in the next life. When they die, that's the end. They can't take their money, they can't take their house, they can't take their car, they can't take any of it. What God's going to ask of us is, what do we do with those things? And what do we do, spiritually speaking, how do we, how do we do spiritually? Did we do what we were supposed to do in keeping the commandments and living a life of grace, etc., etc.? So on this Sunday, let us remind ourselves of this and let us make sure that we are faithful in little things. That when God is asking of us to be a little sacrifice in a little thing or to be faithful to Him in the commandments, that we have to be good stewards and do what God is asking of us. And remember that we are living in a, in a world that a lot of turmoil right now, especially um, in, with current events. If you've been following current, current events, we see uh, the shootings that have happened across the country. Um, and then in Massachusetts, the uh, the state actually, the transgender, um, they, they, they allowed, they passed a law saying that, in, that they can use any bathroom whatsoever. Uh, so things not looking very good, um, and we're going to be persecuted because we're not, so to say, politically correct. We don't fall, we don't go, we call sin a sin, and we say that things that are immoral are, that God has definitely shown us to be immoral in scripture, in the Bible, that those things are immoral, and being true to God and being true to the commandments, we're going to be looked down as not being PC, as not being politically correct, and we're going to obviously be suffering and persecuted for that. So we have to be faithful in those little things. And that story of that priest who wrote about the martyrdom of his family, they were faithful to God and they did not budge on their faith, they did not budge on what they were, on what they knew was right, and they were put to death for that. And that uh, we have to ask ourselves, what would we do in that situation? And strive 
to do our very best to be faithful in those little things. So on this Sunday, remember we cannot serve both God and man. We cannot be both with God and with the world. Um, it's just the spirit of the world is contrary to the spirit of God. And especially for you young people, remember that you, you have to live in this world. All of us have to live in this world, but especially young, young people are bombarded um, with, with these things. Um, it might be the people that you know. Uh, it might be the, at, at school, if you're going to a public school, bombarded with these things, and you have to be strong. And your parents, make sure that your, your, your kids are strong in the faith, That's the, that they're good stewards of their faith. That's the only way that they're going to be able to persevere, is that you instill in them good morals, you instill in them the love for their faith, that you set a good example to them. It's so very important that you uh, eliminate occasions of sin. You know, if you see that they're not dressing modestly, say something, say, hey, take that off, let's get rid of it. Or dress modestly. If, if it's, if they're going out alone, uh, say, okay, no, you need to be chaperoned. You need to have someone who's going to, uh, be there so that you're not getting into trouble. Don't, don't kid yourself. There, it's, it's, following human nature in the world, it's so strong out there. Yeah, if they, if they have a phone, or the access to the internet, say, keep the tabs on what they're doing, on what they're watching, on what they're, what they're going on to. You have, you have that, that duty, and it's, you have to make them, Aware, and you have to give them that strong faith, and that strong love for their for their faith and for God, and that's and give them a, a basis, a strong basis in the commandments and the commandments of the church and morality in general. So on the Sunday, I couldn't want to get off the beaten path, and I know I touched upon a few uh, several things, but just hope that we definitely take to heart that God's going to call us one day, and we're going to have to give an account for our stewardship. So let us make sure that here and now we start making good with the things that God has given to us and that we are living our spiritual lives, that we're doing our very best to live that life that is pleasing to Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.